So, without further ado, um, I'm going to introduce you to Dr. Peter Fonagy. He really needs barely introduction. He's got a string of titles after his name, which is quite the most impressive I've ever seen. Director of UCL Partners Mental Health and Wellbeing Programme, Freud Memorial Professor of Psychoanalysis and Head of Research, Department of Clinical Educational Health Psychology at UCL, Chief Executive of the Anna Freud Centre London and Consultant to the Child and Family Programme of the Meninger Department of Psychiatry and Behavioural Science at Baylor, as well as holding many professorships too in Harvard and Yale. So, most importantly, actually, despite all of these wonderful titles, one of his most august positions and the one that we are most grateful for is the National Clinical Lead for CYPI at. So, Peter, over to you. Thank you very, very much, Jackie. And uh, a very warm welcome from us uh, and the central team of CYPI Apt. And uh, uh, it's wonderful to see so many of you here. And uh, I apologize about the weather. There are some things that are even beyond the control of uh, Catherine Pugh. Right. <laughs> uh, Catherine and I have uh, the enormous privilege of jointly leading uh, this program and uh, uh, many of uh, the slides that I'm presenting are actually her slides and uh, that kind of seamless working together uh, is I hope uh, what characterizes the partnership uh, at all levels. Uh, so we all know that children are expensive and uh, uh, a child with mental disorder costs between 11,000 and 59,000 uh, pounds. A single year's uh, presentation of uh, conduct disorder children costs over 5.2 billion. And if you include uh, criminal, uh, parts of criminal uh, justice in this, the cost goes up for 22.5 billion. Evidence-based practice can actually reduce the cost of child mental health. And I think an important point to remember that overall uh, we only have uh, about 6% uh, of, of the mental health budget for children and young people. So maybe it's not surprising uh, that uh, the way we are seen uh, by children and young people is uh, not altogether flattering sometimes uh, for uh, mental health professionals. Now, this is a, a, a movie that was made by 14 to 19-year-olds, uh, the Oxford uh, uh, Health and Issues Foundation Trust and Swinton Youth Family Forum uh, on their experience of mental disorder.
we are seen as judgmental, as insensitive, as ignorant, as thoughtless, and they feel, uh, sadly, unimportant, disempowered, stigmatized, ignored, misunderstood, scared, dehumanized, and useless. But it's not just young people uh, who uh, say this. There have been numerous reports on CAMS uh, between 2008 and 2011 that have been less than flattering. Uh, report in 2008 felt CAMS were fragmented, provided inconsistent support, too late in a crisis, information was not easy to come by. The highly influential report by Sir Ian Kennedy uh, emphasized the lack of accessibility uh, and called for urgent action. To summarize these uh, numerous reports, there are at least six points uh, that are repeatedly raised. First, that there's a significant shortage of trained professionals. Secondly, that the current level of CAMS staff training is poor and getting worse. Third, that difficulties with access are prevalent and uh, uh, very few services offer a self-referral self route. There's poor handling of the transition between child and adult services. There's inappropriate provision uh, of adult services to children, uh, to young people. And that there is an absence of data that could be used for performance management, self-critical professional practice, or commissioning. So CAMS is in some respects in a poor state of health. But the courageous plan was to use the IAPT initiative to radically transform CAMS from something that was in part already good to something that is great. What is uh, children, young people's IAPT all about? Well, it is uh, really only four things, four components to it. The first, perhaps, is routine outcomes monitoring to guide therapists to help clients monitor and understand how their treatment is progressing and to get all professionals engaged in this process. The second and linked initiative is to empower young people to take control over their care, to establish treatment goals and to choose treatment approaches and take opportunities to improve their own health. Thirdly, to improve the provision of evidence-based therapies. And finally, to introduce evidence-based organization of care wherever possible. Now, I don't have time to take you on the long journey that we have traveled since uh, the initiation of the program, but uh, uh, I do uh, want to uh, emphasize uh, that uh, CYPI was conceived centrally as a program to direct evidence-based practice uh, within CAMS to a particular location that included the incorporation of evidence-based practice principles that were interpreted broadly, uh, including service change, including training of service leads, including training of supervisors and therapists, and creating learning collaboratives made up of universities, local area partnerships, and to offer mutual support, uh, problem solving, as well as a learning network. So we uh, started uh, in perhaps 2000, early 2011, where three task groups began their work on education and curriculum, for uh, education uh, curriculum for CBT and parenting, uh, for outcomes, and uh, uh, for service development. And a consultation uh, with the Young Minds was initiated. By October 2011, Paul Burstow, the Minister, Minister for Care Services, launched the first year of collaboratives. The first 
draft IAP data set and routine outcomes monitoring measures were launched. In February of 2012, applications for next year's programs were announced and an accreditation steering group was convened. Also importantly, a new set of uh, resources were made available for the program. Uh, by July 2012, key performance indicators uh, had been agreed by uh, the expert reference group. The process to develop accreditation of courses and individuals for CYPI was uh, agreed. And the Minister for Care Services announced a new set of sites. By this time, 34% of England was covered. And importantly, a YouTube channel was launched. By July 2013, 25 new GAMS partnerships joined the programme, and in year three, 54% of no, uh, <clears throat> 0 to 19 year old population was covered. By December this year, 2,662 CAMS clinicians will be using outcomes monitoring across 42 sites. That's going to increase to 3,950 in a further 12 months. And finally, the planned recruitment of new CAMS sites for the fourth year uh, will, be, uh, will begin uh, in June 2014 and we will by then cover 60% of the population. What have we delivered? We've delivered national curriculum for cognitive behavior therapy, for anxiety and depression, a national curriculum for parent training for conduct disorder, a systemic family practice curriculum for depression, eating disorder, and conduct problems, interpersonal psychotherapy for adolescent depression. You might ask why uh, IPT, for example. And it is directed by science, directed by the evidence that shows that IPT can, for some youngsters, be more effective than CBT, uh, with the number needed to treat in some studies being half those uh, that are treated uh, by CBT. Similarly, family therapy is the treatment of choice recommended by NICE in, uh, for uh, conduct problems, particularly for severe conduct problems. We have also delivered uh, a curriculum for supervisors, a curriculum for managers, and uh, I think uh, most importantly, We've supported the development of a, a CYP mental health e-platform, uh, working closer together with colleagues in the Department of Health. In terms of uh, all these initiatives and the entire change process that we've initiated is evidence-based, but it's evidence-based not simply in terms of uh, adopting modalities that are backed by randomized controlled trials. If we go way beyond that and we want to strengthen aspects of child mental health care that are based on evidence. Now, in this context, uh, evidence is not something that possessed by researchers and it then comes down from up high uh, to clients via field workers working uh, directly with them. This is the wrong model. What we have in mind in CYPI Act is something that is the conjunction of clients, clinicians, and researchers as a fundamentally participatory, co-produced, co-constructed enterprise in which clients, clinicians are fully engaged. What there is, is evidence for including modalities, but it's more than that. It's an evidence-based service. 
And that includes evidence from science, from randomized control trials. But there is also evidence for being organized around a client's intentions, for being culturally sensitive, for being in many ways uh, engaged with measurement and evaluation of our intervention. There's also evidence that acknowledges the importance of experiences, events that impinge on clients during the course of treatment. And there is also evidence for taking into consideration the larger social context in which our uh, clients live. So the key part of the programme is training therapists in all these principles, but not just therapists, training supervisors and training managers as well. So training is at the heart uh, of the programme, enhancing the skills of practitioners, supervisors and managers, so that CAMS has an appropriately skilled task uh, uh, workforce. And the evaluation is actually for real. It is tested, it's evaluated. Uh, it's evaluated in video recorded uh, sessions. It's evaluated in looking at the ability to make theory practice links. It's evaluated the, in terms of the quality of integration of outcomes data into treatment. It's evaluated in terms of the feedback which is received from supervisors, from young people, and from parents. It's evaluated in terms of a summary of the clinical effectiveness of each therapist. So it is for real. I think most important, perhaps, in terms of our achievement, is uh, a shift towards a collaborative practice between uh, the practitioner and the client. And key to achieving this is indeed the patient reported outcomes that clinicians then can use for decision making. This process of shared clinical decision making is there to help redress a very unfortunate balance where clinicians uh, are really called upon to forego the expert stance that they are used to uh, having to occupy. It is more than uh, an ethical issue. This is an issue that fundamentally strikes at the core of mental health intervention. By getting young people to participate in service design, we ensure that they design a service that they feel is fit for them. By engaging them in training their practitioners, their managers, we ensure that the staff that serve them is staff that they feel is fit to do so. And by engaging them interactively in understanding and modifying their own treatments through patient-reported outcomes and experience, we ensure that each treatment is something that is, they feel is fit for. The issue is really them taking control uh, over their care in terms of establishing their own treatment goals and also how to choose the treatment that they see as being best for them. This is what we now understand is so important in ensuring optimal outcomes. And in all frankness, it is also what generates perhaps the greatest saving. To deliver this, we have to bring about changes in the way services are provided. Uh, and this is at a time as Dr. Cornish has just said, when we are already experiencing massive challenges uh, to uh, CAM service provision. But it is important that transformations that probably will have to take place in any case are informed by research evidence, are taking into account 
the patient's preferences and values at the same time as taking clinician observations into consideration. And that is what will ultimately deliver better care. We know uh, that uh, for this, we need to, to obtain the outcomes that we wish for. We need to have more than evidence-based practice. We need a change in practitioners' attitudes and behavior. And all that is without value unless it's held together by an organizational social context change that actually welcomes uh, these modifications of practice. I think we know that if these things are present, then if these things are successful, the outcomes, the improvements, the benefits are substantial. We know that evidence-based practice per se delivers improved outcomes for children and young people. But evidence-based practice simply in terms of choosing the right treatment for each person delivers at best 15% advantage. If incorporated in that, uh, we have treatments that are shaped to the needs of individual children and young people. That benefit is double, and we are able to really claim uh, true gains for the young people who we serve. Now, service improvements are linked to evidence-based practice. And there are a range of ways in which uh, uh, the literature out there has substantiated uh, the initiative that we have taken. Uh, there are a number of things that we expect to happen uh, as a consequence of CYPI Act. The first is reducing the variation in referral rates through improved triage, and treatment allocation, through improved reattendance rates, through a reduction of treatment length, and reduced reduction of inpatient care. Secondly, uh, there is also a chance to share practice, to adopt back practice, to adopt better pathway management, better operational management, improve patient flow through the system, and uh, Ultimately, uh, in this, uh, I think, uh, an increase of productive staff time through more rigorous redesign of methods and the, uh, and the skill mix. The aim is to create an improved patient flow and to reduce waste wherever possible. Poorly designed systems uh, actually demand higher effort. And also associated with evidence-based practice, as I have just defined, is a reduction of the complexity of care. And I would strongly advocate that all these serve actually to make us more productive. It saves costs, but I think to save costs for the purpose of increased efficiency and improved uh, investment. Based on the extent data, we have estimated the annual savings which CYPI Act is likely to generate uh, across, uh, and I do not mean these are savings uh, in real terms, I do mean savings in terms of improved productivity. Uh, our estimate is that the first year we might have saved uh, something in slightly in excess of 3 million. But the second year, it has probably increased to about 30 million. The third year, 23 million. The fourth year, 30, in excess of 34 million. The cumulative savings uh, actually uh, amount to far more than the investment in CYPI. Now, this we are offering as the foundation for a robust call for increased funding 
for child and adolescent mental health services because what is now being delivered is something with improved efficiency. And uh, it is uh, high time that we improve the investment that we make uh, in our children. We and our children's mental health. I think we have come to a time uh, within uh, the progress of policy where it is generally recognized that children's mental health is an invest to save issue at many levels. Uh, and uh, uh, I would plead with you and urge you that an efficient, streamlined, accessible child and adolescent mental health service is the platform that we require to make this case loud and clear to those uh, at NHS England and those in the Department of Health who are in position to uh, make decisions. So what are the strategies that we put in place for sustaining change? I think there is a great deal there. Um, that we are doing to ensure that the changes that we've introduced are sustained. The participation that we are trying to encourage, we try to embed in the organization of services. The culture of trusts, the recruitment of staff, the establishment of participation lead posts are there to serve this purpose. We need to involve commissioners more, and we have plans in place for that. Uh, but I think it is enormously important that this is done locally as well as nationally with our support. It is important that outcomes, routine outcomes measurement, session by session monitoring of outcomes is embedded in the way teams work. It's also important that the principles that we have talked about, that the principles uh, of uh, improved access to evidence-based practice through a collaborative process is embedded in the strategic model of CAM service delivery uh, with all partner agencies. It's heartening to see that self-referral is growing even between year one and year two of uh, the CYPI Act initiative. And it's also heartening to see that supervision structures have improved massively. The governance structure that we put in place is also, uh, I think, robust and can withstand scrutiny. Uh, you won't be able to see the entire complexity uh, of, of that slide. But at, at its core is, uh, we feel, the expert reference group chaired uh, by Dr. Cornish, which takes reports quarterly from sites and feeds back to sites on the basis of the combined uh, set of reports. But the reporting is uh, not just uh, in a downward uh, uh, trajectory, it's also uh, to the IA board that holds us accountable. Uh, for uh, our performance. And quarterly reports are submitted to the joint IR program board, as well as monthly reports to NHS England, NHS IQ, and the Cabinet Office. Uh, we have, in effect, a knowledge management system that we feel uh, quite proud of. Um, we feel that what we've put in place is a, a system where data analysis is provided through the CYPI Apt initiative and lessons that are learned are fed back uh, on the web to all participating organizations. So the knowledge management system includes uh, best value system templates that are actually shared with all uh, participating organizations. Curricula and case management approaches to particular disorders that we've accumulated. 
a network of support that we've created, uh, a collaboration uh, of uh, interested parties that are partly nationally organized as today, but also locally mediated by the HEIs. And these provide a mechanism, a solid mechanism for rapid knowledge transfer, which uh, is necessary in order for progress to be maintained. So looking into the future, when the central team is no longer there, when there are staff turnover, when there are changes in funding streams, when there are modification of prog program requirements, we need to have a, a need to develop a, a national system for quality assurance. Uh, the quality assurance of the training, the quality assurance of performance, the quality assurance of service qualifications. And management training also needs to be uh, within this frame. Uh, the organizational culture, the climate that I was trying to emphasize, that's so essential to the delivery of evidence-based practice must be there. So to sustain it, uh, we, uh, looking into the future, we have established a accreditation, uh, a national accreditation panel with all the important stakeholders uh, that uh, represented sharing responsibility for looking after this project into the future. We're also uh, keen to hold ourselves accountable for our key performance indicators, to have the support of MindEd there uh, to maintain our curricula, to maintain outcome monitoring, and to develop uh, work streams uh, that support commissioners to make the right commissioning decision in relation to evidence-based practice in CYPI. In all this, uh, we hope that we will gradually generate a different attitude amongst our children and young people in, uh, towards the CAM services. And some of the work that we have done, I hope, with our young people participating in CYPI Act already demonstrated this. Obviously, this has been uh, a work uh, that uh, uh, many have been involved in. I don't have time to list uh, everyone, but here, rapidly moving past you, are the large number of individuals that have been key to making our success to this stage effective. And uh, I want to thank everyone who has been involved in this massive and we feel highly successful collaborative effort uh, between uh, NHS CAMS professionals and uh, allied professionals. So thank you very much, everyone, for your involvement. Peter, thank you very much. That was indeed the tour de force that we expected and we received. A, a very clear oversight of the development and the status now and the exciting future for CYPI Apt. One thing that particularly resonated with me, I have to say, even though I come from a different tertiary specialty, yet nonetheless, within my medical management career, I have managed CAMS services. 
And the thing about increasing the referral rate and meeting the unmet need really resonates at a time when I can remember delivering services from about 60 different sites with no IT and notes never in the right place. So this is just such a fantastic, exciting, and truly, of all the things I come across in the NHS, truly transformational program. So thank you.